Hello, welcome to part four of chemistry paper one at Excel. Okay, so let's look at the next question then. We'll dive straight, straight in to introduce myself for another one. Uh, molten zinc chloride is an electrolyte. Okay, which row shows the products formed at the anode and at the cathode when molten zinc chloride is electrolyzed? Okay, so remember cations, positive, go to the cathode and anions negative go to the um, anode. Okay, so let's have a look. So we've got product of anode. So it'd be the anion. Okay, so zinc chloride. So it must be not oxygen because it's not oxygen there. It must be chlorine. Okay, zinc chloride. So what's going to be at the cathode, the positive one? Um, well, we haven't really got any hydrogen there either. So it must be this one, it must be C. Okay, so we've got zinc and chlorine. Okay, number two. Which of the following is the reason why molten zinc chloride is an electrolyte? Electrolyte means that um, it can conduct electricity. So molecules that can move, but doesn't conduct electricity, has a giant structure. Some giant structures conduct, but not, but not all. We can't really say that. It contains delocalized electrons. It's not a metal, okay, by itself. It's not, a, it's not like zinc by itself. Okay, and also, and chloride is a solution, so it contains ions that move. Ah, okay, so we get into electrolysis, we get ions moving. Right, next one. Copper sulfate solution was electrolyzed using copper electrodes. Draw a labeled diagram to show the apparatus that is used to carry out electrolysis um, in a laboratory. Okay, so copper sulfate, so in a beaker, Okay, um, I'll leave this in a moment. Okay, so we're going to draw is electrodes. Electrons have to stick into the solution. Copper electrodes. And we need a power supply. Okay, oh, let me continue my diagram. So we've got beaker, copper electrodes. Say two marks, it's not going to be too detailed. And a power supply. We've been asked to label this. That's all we need for two marks. And your two marks, all you needed was electrodes labeled um, in oh, oh, copper sulfate solution. Okay, make sure we write that. Okay. Just to be sure. That's all we need for two marks. Nice, easy diagram like that. Okay. So, yeah, we'll look at the marks, how many marks there are. Okay. Before the electrolysis, the masses of the electrodes were determined. After the electrolysis, the electrodes were washed and dried and their masses redetermined. Figure six shows these masses and the resulting changes in the masses of the electrodes. Right, mass of the electrode before electrolysis, the anode and the cathode, very similar but a little bit different, so make sure. Mass of the electrode after electrolysis. So the anode's gone down, decreased, so my arrow next to it. Okay, and this has increased, gone up. Oh, and they told you anyway. Change in mass of electrode in ground minus, yes, yeah, so they've gone down, and plus cathode. Explain these results. Okay, so. So the anode obviously lost mass. So anode has lost mass. Okay, so <coughs> it must have lost copper. So the um, cathode has gained mass. Well, we don't know, we're not going to say it's um, necessary copper. Okay, so let's talk about why. The four marks, I know you don't only give us two, so let's talk about why. What happens at the anode? So the anode, so copper atoms become copper ions. Okay. So what happens? 
Okay, you've got the copper ions of the anode and they go into solution and they lose two electrons. Okay. So you get to actually a loss, so they're lost. Okay, so um, at the uh, cathode, so we'll pause for a bit then, cathode, copper ions become copper atoms. It's what the reaction, so it's kind of the other way around. Two plus plus two E. Okay, goes to copper. Okay, so that's actually what's happening there. So actually, the copper is being deposited on the on the on the cathode. That's why it's increasing in mass. Right, next one. When sodium sulfate, so we've got a different thing here, but similar. When sodium sulfate solution is electrolyzed, electrolyzed using inert electrodes so that react, hydrogen is formed at the cathode. Write the half equation for the formation of hydrogen gas, H2, from hydrogen ions. All right, so we need to have hydrogen ions first of all. Okay. And they need electrons. And they form hydrogen. Okay, and all we need to do is need to balance this. Two, okay, and two. All right, okay, so that's actually all we need for that question. It's a balancing of one mark and the actual way of the hydrogen. So it's kind of written backwards, isn't it? There, so the hydrogen ions form hydrogen. Okay, next question. So we've got the industrial process, which promised to murder. The industrial production of sulfuric acid involves several steps. One of these steps in the, is the reaction of sulfur dioxide, SO2, with oxygen to form sulfur trioxide. Okay, three oxygen. So 2SO2 plus O2 goes to 2SO3. Okay, what volume of sulfur trioxide in DM cubed, DM cubed back again, is produced by the complete reaction of 750 dm cubed with sulfur dioxide. Okay, what volume, so what is volume of this is produced by the complete reaction? All right, so if you look at it, okay, this is actually easier than we think. We think, oh, because lots of working, there isn't here. There's two moles of sulfur um, dioxide, okay, and also it's a volume. Okay, this is a careful one. Okay, with chemistry, it's a volume. So if it's so one mole of a gas takes up the same so um volume as all other one mole of gas. There's two moles of sulfur dioxide, two moles of sulfur trioxide, it would actually take up the same volume. Okay, that's why it says all volumes of gas are measured under the same conditions of temperature and pressure. That's just knowing something there. Okay, and also one mark, there's not gonna be much work involved in it. If you see that one mark, be careful. Like, oh, it might be easy we think, that one mark. Okay. So, next one. Calculate the volume of oxygen needed to react completely with 750 dm3 with sulfur dioxide. All, again, all the volumes of gas. Again, one mark is so going to be something that's fairly straightforward. Right, we've got two moles of sulfur dioxide reacting with, I know it's O2, but that's still one mole. Okay, so it's two moles to one mole. It's a ratio. So what would that be? We only need half the amount. So half of 750, and that would be uh, 375. And that's our answer. With this, we need to look at the standard, standard volume of a mole of gas under standard temperature and conditions. It actually will help you into A-level too, that one. I remember... Um, that being asked a lot in A level, lots, lots of questions like that. Um, that didn't actually require much work, it just required you to know that. Okay, so now we've got a calculation. Calculate the mass, it's not a volume, so it doesn't have the same rules anymore. Back to kind of normal, really. Calculate the mass in kilograms of 750 dm cubed of sulfur dioxide measured at room temperature and pressure. 
Okay, so there they go. It tells you down here. So always, always look at the rest of the paper because sometimes it gives you clues. So it's got one mole of any gas at room temperature and pressure occupies twenty four dm cubed. Okay, yeah, there's a bit of a cat. Yeah, there's a bit of a hint down there, isn't it? Okay, so we need to work out. Okay, the actual how many moles we've got there. So moles of when we worked out the two, that was a ratio. We need to work out the actual number now. Okay, we need to get ratios before. So moles of um, SO2. Okay, so um, let's look at that. So it says 750 dm cubed. But divide that by 24. Okay, because we said one mole of gas. So again, we're working out more absolute things now rather than just a ratio. Okay, so we've got actual numbers now. Let's put that out. So 750 divided by 24, 31.25 moles. Okay, that's our first step. 31.25 moles of SO2. Right, we've got the moles. Now we need the mass. Okay, so mass, okay, this, um, okay, so the mass is, let's do that, so we've got 31.25, if I read the formula mass, okay, so all we need to do, okay, we've got 31, so remember, if we're in the, in the formula, moles equals mass over formula mass, So we need to do 31.25 moles times 64. I'm just rearranging that equation as I'm doing it live for you. Okay, I'm just sort of working out. So I had that in my calculator actually. 31.25 um, times 64. Okay, so that's 2,000. Right, let's think about the units here. Okay, that's the correct. Oh, it's actually think you actually would get, um, okay, you actually get all the marks for that. But it's going to get the units, it's going to be a bit more careful with this. That is in grams, so it's 2,000 grams. Actually, okay, so that it actually says in the mark scheme that you get two out of, if you just left it as that, you get two out of three marks. So don't panic. But the next step, I'm just going to say to get the whole marks, that's in grams. Okay, relative formula mass is in grams, so it's just the units to get the next mark. So that is actually, that's 2,000 grams, two kilograms. Okay, two kilograms. So that was in grams. Look at the units there. Okay, so yeah, might, that's a little bit of a trickier one to think about, but um, you go through it, okay, um, then it'll help you a lot. Okay, so I've got, um, got a longer answer here. Let's have a look. The reaction to produce sulfur trioxide, so we're still doing the same thing, reaches an equilibrium. Okay, the forward reaction is exothermic. Let's put an arrow, exothermic. Exothermic, so it gives out heat, remember? Gives out heat. The rate of attainment of equilibrium and the equilibrium yield of sulfur trioxide are affected by pressure and temperature. Okay, yeah, because it's, it's a thermal, so it's going to be affected. A manufacturer considered two sets of conditions, A and B, for this reaction. In each case, sulfur trioxide, in each case, we back, sulfur dioxide is mixed with excess oxygen, will be needed to react. The manufacturer change the temperature and the pressure, and only use the catalyst in B. The sets of conditions A and B are shown in figure seven. So, so set of conditions for A, let's read it along. Pressure in atmospheres, ATM means atmospheres, so two atmospheres. Temperature in Celsius, no catalyst used, 680 degrees, so quite high. B, pressure in atmospheres, four. Okay, so we've got um, a higher pressure, Temperature pretty high still, but not as high. 45 catalysts used. The manufacturer chooses set conditions B 
rather than set of conditions A. Explain by considering the effect of changing the conditions on the rate of attainment of equilibrium and on the equilibrium yield of sulfur trioxide when the manufacturer chooses a set of conditions B rather than the set of conditions A. Okay, so B. So if it's exothermic, um, increasing the temperature only goes so far. Okay, so let's talk about the let's talk about um, temperature first. I'm not the first on the list, but it's the easiest one. Okay, to talk about. So equilibrium. Okay. So they chose B. Let's underline that. Okay, equilibrium is reached faster with higher temperatures. Faster with higher temperatures. As more reactions occur, as more successful reactions occur. Reactions occur. But if the temperature is too high, for an exothermic reaction, yield will go down. So for exothermic reactions, Yield will decrease. Okay, so let's have a look as well. Okay, so that, for that one, okay, so um, yeah, the a little bit of extra here. So temperatures that are too high, so high temperatures would favour the back, sorry, high temperatures favour the back reaction, which we don't want. So favour the back reaction, the backward reaction. Okay. So the next one about pressure. So let's have a look about the molecules. So we're forming one molecule up to. So a higher pressure, okay, so higher pressure, depression now, so higher pressures would fall, would favour the forward reaction. Higher pressures like in B, would favour the forward reaction. Okay, so also the catalyst used in B in B would speed up the reaction, speed up the reaction, speed up the reaction by lowering activation energy. So we wouldn't need the temperature being as high. That's great. So, example, oh, yeah, lots of times this is like a real life example. So, we have to think about what was worth and what favors the back and forward reaction there. Okay. So, speed would say about um, high pressures would favor the forward reaction. So, because there's fewer, yeah, so fewer molecules in, there's fewer molecules in forward reaction. That's why there. Okay, lower reactants. So yeah, so it wouldn't need. So it reduces the need. Let's finish this off. So reducing the need. So for the high temperature. Okay. 
Okay, so we've got our three things there and we've explained why. So that will give us our, we've got extra writing if we need it. Okay, but we've um, concisely said it to get our six marks. We need three things and explanation will give you the six marks there. And also remember to write full sentences as much as you can to get the um, clarity of, of writing there. So thank you for listening and I'll see you in the next part. Thanks, bye.